$600, $550. There's a $50 gap between the RX 9070 and the RX 9070 XT. The release date is March 6th, which is a day after the RTX 5070 launches for $550. It's a weirdly small gap between these, but AMD isn't a stranger to smothering one product with another. It did that with the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX last time. AMD today announced its RX 9070 series again. If it feels familiar, that's because it is. So in January, AMD started to announce it. It briefed the press. We published the information along with anyone else who's pre-briefed. And then it decided, never mind, we're not going to say that on stage because we just found out NVIDIA's price or something and decided not to. So that's kind of what went down. It is now re-announcing the previously rescinded announcement that had shriveled up and gone back once it came. The RX 9070 is positioned to fight the RTX 5070 with the 9070 XT up against the 5070 Ti. They even aligned the naming this time. In fact, AMD has basically decided to steal NVIDIA's naming, growing tired of its own. And we can't see why. The previous naming scheme brought us greats like the R9270, the R7370, the RX480, the Fury, the Fury X, the RX580, Vega Frontier Edition, Vega 56, Vega 64, back to the RX590, RX5700 XT, RX6950 XT, and the RX7900 XTX. I'm definitely skipping a few in there. It's kind of hard to keep track of them all see previous naming issues. So now it is on to the NVIDIA naming scheme and it's the 9070 series. We'll see how long they stick to this and we're waiting to see what they do once they hit the dreaded number 10. Maybe AMD will be the first to launch the 10,080 Ti XT. Anyway, AMD's brought the 9070 out again and so now we're going to go into the specs and some of the pricing recap. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Tower 600 case. The Tower 600 is a vertical case design with Thermaltake's unique showcase presentation which stands out further with its separate chassis stand kit that rotates the case for an angled showpiece. The Tower 600 is heavily ventilated around the sides, has a ton of radiator support including up to 420mm solutions, and offers two GPU mounting options for display and cooling optimization. It also comes in colors not commonly seen in cases. Learn more about the Tower 600 at the link in the description below. First up, the price. At $50 apart, it seems like they're going to smother each other. We'll look at the data in about a week or so, a little less actually, so we'll know soon enough. Uh, it does seem like they're just too close to not cannibalize one or the other because the XT and the XTX were $100 apart uh, and they were too close. So anyway, we'll see what happens. But getting into it, a quick pricing recap. AMD's RX 7800 XT is currently priced around $500 to $530, depending on where or if you can get it. The RX 7900 GRE has been around $550, though it's mostly been out of stock lately. The RX 7900 XT is basically gone, but it was $630 to $640 at the end of last year, and it was more commonly around $680. The 7900 XTX was as low as $800 to $820 in November and was commonly $930 in January. It launched at $1,000. The 7900 XT received a review from us entitled AMD's Greedy Upsell in December of 2022, knocking it for the $900 price point. We revisited it in October of 2023, so less than a year later, because you could get some models for $720. AMD dropped the price by 20% or so in less than a year. The 7900 XT became actually an awesome value after the price drops for at least a window there where I mean, when it was 700, 720 bucks, especially before the 50 series and before the end of the 40 series, AMD really was looking pretty fierce with that particular card, especially in raster performance. Uh, and we'll talk more about pricing once we have the benchmark numbers in, including NVIDIA's lineup. But getting into the 9070 series with that context, here's the specs. AMD provided this spec sheet for its RX 9070 and 9070 XT. The 9070 will have 56 compute units or CUs against the 64 on the 9070 XT. So that's a 14% increase or so in CU count between the two of them going to the 64. AMD has done splits like this before, like with Vega 56 and 64, but the architecture has changed dramatically since then. In a call with the press, AMD claimed that the reason it didn't go up to something like 80 CUs is because it didn't want to make something super expensive. Definitely that would be very expensive. It would be a larger die. So that is accurate that the cost would go up. We also think that the architecture might just struggle to compete with the 5090 at the cost they would need to hit to do so, and that's probably a large reason for this as well. They're focusing on the mid-range where maybe the architecture is better tuned to compete. The Harbor Ray Tracing accelerators match the CU count at 56 and 64, with AMD's so-called AI accelerators at 112 and 128 units. Boost clocks are significantly different between them. The 9070 XT is able to make more use of its extra 84 watts of power budget to hit an advertised boost of 2.97 gigahertz, 
with the RX 9070 at 2.52, although there was a brief window where they said it was 2.54. Uh, so there's two different sets of these slides out there, but 2.52 is the final that they give us right before the announcement goes up. Memory capacity is identical at 16 gigabytes. Both cards will also utilize the same GDDR6 at 20 gigabit per second. The board power is advertised at 220 watts and 304 watts, hopefully with room for board partners to scale up and add overclocking support. NVIDIA's overclocking support has really been relatively lackluster this generation, despite what they claimed with the 5070 Ti. Uh, the 5090 especially was very lackluster. There just wasn't room in the power budget for it. So hopefully AMD can make that exciting for us. Finally, the cards technically are on PCIe Gen 5 by 16, but we already showed that there's no real impact here to performance with the 5090. There almost certainly won't be any impact with the 90 series either, with the exception of if they were to cut down the slot on a lower end model or something to like a buy four again like they've done in the past that might cause some problems but for this it won't matter display port is up to 2.1 a and hdmi at 2.1 b according to this slide here's the block diagram for the rdna4 die and architecture amd noted that this same die will be used for the 9070 to 9070 xt the company says that this will be 356.5 millimeters squared contain 53.9 billion transistors at most and run on a four nanometer process node. And then the 9070 would have some of the CUs turned off basically. This is monolithic silicon and not a chiplet design, AMD says. This variation of the GPU has four shader engines. Within each is contained eight dual compute units. L2 cache is centralized and located towards the middle of the logical block, totaling eight megabytes of L2 with 64 megabytes of infinity cache at the outer edges and closer to the memory controllers. Andy's big claim here is a renewed focus on ray tracing performance, where it says it has doubled ray tracing intersection rates and improved ray traversal, alongside changes to how it's handling bounding boxes for BVH probing. So this is a big focus for them this generation, and it is somewhere they need to focus because it's uh, they're pretty competitive in raster for last gen versus nvidia a lot of the time but there's instances where they just get completely crushed in rt so they need to focus here here's a closer look internally though where the area we'll focus on is rt within what amd calls the compute engine amd now has two ray accelerators to handle box and triangle intersections amd noted that the second intersection engine within the accelerator quote doubles the performance for both ray box and ray triangle testing end quote over rdna3 although remember that this doesn't mean a clean doubling and performance in an actual ray tracing gaming benchmark scenario amd noted that rt processing takes advantage of a 128 kilobyte shared memory block also shown here and then this slide was dedicated to rt improvements specifically and highlights the addition of amd's dedicated ray transform block which the company claims will quote offload transformation as you transition from the top level rt structure to the bottom level where there may be many instances of a particular geometry end quote previously shader instructions handled this task and amd says added overhead to ray traversal which it claims to have now eliminated the ray accelerators have the ray transform block and two intersection engines which themselves required changes to BVH handling to be fully leveraged. AMD said it's moving to an eight wide BVH solution or BVH eight from a four wide option BVH four on earlier hardware, which it couples with its new oriented bounding box approach OBB that attempts to reduce wasted empty space and bounding boxes by better conforming to the geometry in the scene and theoretically reducing false positives and also therefore reducing performance overhead and loss during geometry intersection probing. The slide claims Claims that traversal performance improves by 10%. Again, this is not a literal 10% gain in the final frame rate in an RT game, but it's a building block and a series of others to contribute to what AMD's claimed uplift is. We'll get to those numbers in a minute. This slide was pretty cool. The right side shows AMD's register allocation. It's always fun to look at stuff like this, with the top right showing RDNA 3 and the bottom right showing RDNA 4. Between the two, there's a change from static allocation in RDNA 3 to dynamic in RDNA 4. AMD highlights that RDNA 3 would reserve registers which may not be put to work, so it'd hold them in case they were needed, potentially not need them, and end up with inefficiency and unavailable resources. RDNA 4 is trying to resolve this. The bullets on the left make all this pretty clear, stating that the improvement is in efficient utilization, largely because registers can be released or requested as needed. AMD is claiming that its RDNA 4 CUs improved traversal by 2x over RDNA 3 when isoclock and bandwidth. 
This 3D block on the right is supposed to roughly illustrate where AMD thinks it's finding most of its performance. It appears that the two intersectors and BVH8 change from 4 are the largest contributions. RDNA 4 also introduces more out-of-order queuing and aims to reduce latency of memory requests, which AMD claims further benefit RT performance. Further out-of-order execution allows work to complete even while longer latency requests are processing or queuing. AMD makes an example out of an uncached leaf node on the slide, which would contain the lowest level of detail in an RT workload uh, and could otherwise hold up a scene. Let's get into first-party benchmark claims next. We won't spend a ton of time on these since you'll be able to find plenty of third-party reviews online soon enough, but it'll help us set the expectations for what AMD's targeting. AMD's quick reference slide shows a claimed 26% uplift against the 3080 and 38% uplift against the 6800 XT. And he did not show anything from the 40 series or the 50 series here. At 4K Ultra and without upscaling, AMD is marketing the 9070 non-XT as an average of 21% improved over the 7900 GRE. The 7900 GRE was originally a $550 card. AMD is showing non-RT performance as improving up to 28% on baseline, 100%, with the ray tracing performance showing a disproportionately favorable gain to the new architecture at up to 34%. This is good for AMD as it was weakest in ray tracing historically. This disproportionate gain won't wipe out AMD's deficit in something like Cyberpunk or possibly Black Myth Wukong, but the key will be whether it can close the gap with better value. At 1440p Ultra and Native, AMD claims the 9070 will be 20% faster on average with the peak at 38% improved for ray tracing and 26 improved for raster. AMD observed a slightly larger improvement in RT at 1440p for F1, which is interesting, despite overall losses in scaling and raster. 4K diverging from 1440p isn't abnormal, though. One thing we do want to call attention to and give AMD credit for here, though, is that they're showing native performance. So even if they show FSR... That's fine if they kept it locked to the same FSR options between their older and their newer gen card. If they're comparing their own products to each other, showing native is another step better than that. This is a massive improvement over what we've been complaining about NVIDIA doing, which was comparing its 50 series to its 40 series and enabling MFG 4X on the 50 series, but not the 40 series, and then just making it look like they are wildly better than they actually are. So we do want to call attention to and give AMD credit for making a more fair head-to-head -head comparison between its own products here, rather than enabling some special multiplier on one and not the other. As for the RX 9070 XT, AMD compared against its 6900 XT and NVIDIA's 3090, again, lacking any 40 or 50 comparison here. It claims a 51% uplift over the 6900 XT and 26% average uplift over the RTX 3090. Against the same 7900 GRE, AMD claims an average uplift of 42% or 66% in F124 with ray tracing at the high end. AMD claims it saw the same uplift in Cyberpunk with RT. In raster performance, the gains max out at 48% over baseline. And then at 1440p, AMD has seen lower overall average uplift with a slight uptick in F124 RT. Now, of course, we have enough numbers here with what AMD's provided where we could produce a percent scaling chart or something against the 7900 GRE data, which we have and is public at this point, and then calculate where these will land. But uh, we're just we're just going to wait for the review because we'll have the actual numbers soon enough and uh, we'll be able to talk about the value and all that stuff then. But pricing is going to remain the key concern for these cards. They're doing some interesting things architecturally. We've covered a bit of that today. And he's got plenty of opportunities to have ROPs and cables that are not going to burn. So there's the field is set for AMD to have a victory here. It is up to them to execute on it. And we just made a video called AMD Don't Screw This Up. And it talks primarily about the pricing. But the reason AMD has this amazing opportunity is because of NVIDIA's screw-ups, which are external and which it can't force. You can watch that video if you want to hear more of that discussion. We'll kind of leave that there. I already did the whole thing. But... Pricing is the key concern. We'll withhold further judgment on it until uh, about a week from now. <laughs> the, I don't, that 550, I don't know, I'm, uh, we'll see. We'll see how that $550 pricing holds for the 9070 non-XT. Um, but we'll have numbers soon enough. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. That is the news on the specs for the cards. 
Uh, from what we understand, it sounds like supply will be okay. It's hard to know what that really means, but uh, one of the weird pieces of background information here is that some of these retailers have had these cards since like December, but most of them were starting to get them in January when everything shifted. And so there was Chinese New Year in the middle there, which stops production, uh, and that would have affected everyone. But AMD has theoretically had a little more time to stockpile, so they've probably made use of that time. We'll see if it matters at all. It's really just going to depend on uh, how these look for price to performance, but also if Nvidia stock stabilizes at all, because right now it just looks like pretty much anything's going to sell. It's like price it whatever you want, it'll evaporate. Uh, but the thing that really matters is sort of that long-term staying power, reputational impact, and can AMD get market share? That's what they really need to try and do here. They're pretty close to the lowest they've ever been for GPU market share. They're at 10% right now per John Petty research. And uh, NVIDIA's down in terms of the reputation and the trust in the brand. And so now is the time to strike for AMD and we'll let you know if they execute on it or not pretty soon. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to support us directly or patreon.com slash gamersaccess to throw a few bucks a month our way. And we'll see you all next time.